It always starts with something small, a flicker, a shadow, a spectral signature that doesn't quite add up. That's how scientists first noticed something strange coming from Proxima Centauri b, a rocky planet orbiting the closest star to our solar system. But what the James Webb Space Telescope JWST, has picked up recently is more than strange, and it might just be the thing we've been waiting for – signs of alien life. But the crazy part is, it's not light years away in some unreachable galaxy. It's just 4.24 light years from Earth, practically next door. So, let's begin with the basics. Proxima Centauri b is a planet orbiting Proxima Centauri, the smallest star in the Alpha Centauri system. It's a red dwarf, cooler and dimmer than our Sun, but extremely common in the universe. Red dwarfs burn slow, which means their planets have a better chance of surviving long enough for life to develop. Discovered in 2016, Proxima b was already a hot topic because of its location, where it sits right in the habitable zone, the sweet spot where liquid water could exist, but up until now, it's all been theory. Could it have an atmosphere? Could it support life? Or was it just another barren rock circling a flare-happy sun? What began as a whisper in the data soon turned into a shout. Hidden among terabytes of observations from the James Webb Space Telescope, a faint, peculiar signal kept surfacing, one that didn't quite belong. Its origin? A rocky little world orbiting our closest stellar neighbor, Proxima Centauri. This rocky world has long been on our radar, but now it's lit up with possibility. JWST, using its powerful infrared spectrometers, caught something strange, a molecular signature that resembled those of gases tied to a biological process. It's the kind of quiet discovery that sends the scientific world into overdrive. Not a headline-grabbing alien encounter, but a thread, a signal, a spark. And just like that, Centauri b went from cosmic curiosity to front-page headline. And the reason? A discovery so unexpected. It's forcing scientists to rethink what we thought we knew about life beyond Earth. JWST doesn't take pretty snapshots, it studies life, specifically how starlight filters through a planet's atmosphere during transit. That's called transmission spectroscopy. And when it turns its lens towards Proxima b, what it found was remarkable. Possible traces of carbon dioxide, methane, and most provocatively, dimethyl sulfide DMS. DMS isn't something you find casually drifting in alien skies. On Earth, its primary source is life. Microbial plankton release it in the oceans, and it floats into the atmosphere so reliably that it's considered a biosignature gas. The moment astronomers spotted even the suggestion of DMS, the implications were clear. This isn't just geology at play. To be clear, JWST didn't see life, it saw molecular fingerprints, but in astrobiology, finding DMS on a rocky Earth-sized planet inside the habitable zone is like stumbling upon an unburned match in the forest. Something might have lit it, and that too recently. Further supporting the find were the ratios of these gases. Methane and carbon dioxide in combination, especially without hydrogen, are hard to sustain abiotically. These ratios aren't easily explained by non-biological chemistry, pushing us to the uncomfortable realm of possibility. These ratios don't line up with what we'd expect from geology alone, and that nudges us into a thrilling but uncomfortable possibility – biology. We've seen this movie before. Phosphine on Venus had the science world buzzing for months. Initial data pointed to something strange. Then came the critics. Better instruments, refined models, and alternative explanations chipped away at the excitement until only uncertainty remained. So yes, caution is warranted. JWST's data is strong, but not infallible. Interpretation is key. Astronomers are meticulous, and peer review is brutal, especially for claims this bold. The current findings? They are tentative, pending follow-ups. But unlike Venus, the environment of Proxima b is far more promising. Also, this wasn't even JWST's main mission. These biosignature hints came from side observations, secondary targets, not headline hunts. That's the wild part. We might have just accidentally bumped into a life signal while looking at something else. And now, 
all eyes turned to next-gen telescopes. The extremely large telescope ELT in Chile, launching later this decade, will provide even higher resolution spectral data. NASA's proposed LUVOR mission, if greenlit, will search exoplanet atmospheres with the precision of a forensic lab. They'll either confirm or refute JWST's claims and maybe change everything we think so far. If approved, these powerful telescopes will study exoplanet atmospheres with incredible detail, like forensic labs in space. They'll either back up what JWST found or prove it was just noise. Let's lean into speculation, but keep it informed. Proxima b is about 17% more massive than Earth, suggesting a rocky composition and decent gravity. It orbits a red dwarf star at a blistering 0.05 AU, 20 times closer than Earth is to the Sun. But red dwarfs are cooler, and Proxima b still sits in the star's habitable zone. That doesn't mean it's a tropical paradise. It means liquid water might exist under the right conditions. However, such proximity comes at a price. Proxima b is almost certainly tidally locked. One side always faces the star, perpetual day, the other side, eternal night. On the day side, surface temperatures may soar past boiling. On the night side, it's a deep freeze. But right between these extremes lies the Terminator Zone, a narrow ring of perpetual twilight. And there, the conditions might be just right. Temperatures could hover near freezing to temperate, with winds distributing heat. If an atmosphere exists, it could help buffer these extremes and circulate energy. Now, imagine life in this narrow band. It wouldn't resemble anything here. Evolution would be driven by radiation flares, low visible light, and chemical scarcity. Organisms might rely on chemosynthesis, not photosynthesis, deriving energy from the planet's crust or atmosphere. Skin might be reflective or translucent. Eyes, if they even exist, could be turned to infrared. Burrowing, hibernation, or biofluorescence could be survival strategies. Even if it's just microbial life, that alone would be seismic. Because if life arose on a planet so different from Earth, then it means life is common. We're not a cosmic fluke, we're just one version. But survival out there isn't easy. Proxima Centauri is not friendly. It throws violent solar flares hundreds of times more powerful than those from our Sun. Those flares could strip atmospheres, destroy organic molecules, and make life nearly impossible. But impossible isn't the same as non-existent. Life, if it does exist on Proxima b, would have to be extremely resilient. Think of tardigrades, those microscopic water bears on Earth that can survive in the vacuum of space, boiling water, and radiation. Now, scale that kind of survival strategy to a planetary level. You might get microbes that repair DNA after every flare, or ecosystems that go dormant for years, reactivating when conditions improve. It's survival, not comfort, that defines life. All of this changes the game. We've always assumed that intelligent life would be incredibly rare. But if even microbial life can evolve in harsh conditions, close to an active red dwarf, on a planet so close to us, what does that say about the rest of the galaxy? There are tens of billions of red dwarfs in the Milky Way. Many have rocky planets. If Proxima b has life, the implication isn't that life is rare, it's inevitable. And if life is inevitable, then maybe intelligence isn't unique to Earth. This also impacts how we plan future missions. Proxima b isn't science fiction anymore, it's a target. With current ion propulsion tech and projects like Breakthrough Starshot, which proposes sending ultralight nanoprobes at 20% the speed of light, we could theoretically reach the Proxima system in just over 20 years. For the first time, a human-made object could reach another star system within a single generation. And think of it like this, a tiny probe coasts into the Proxima system after two decades, it swings past Proxima b, and then the first image a rugged terrain, maybe clouds, maybe even an ocean reflecting the dim red light of its star. That moment, it would be the biggest scientific event in human history. Bigger than the moon landing, bigger than Mars rovers. Because it wouldn't just be about Proxima b, it would mean we are not alone. Despite the excitement, this is where caution matters. The data from JWST is still early. Interpreting atmospheric signatures is extremely complex. There could be non-biological explanations for what we're seeing. 
volcanic activity, photochemical reactions, or even instrument noise. But something has changed. Proxima b has gone from a theoretical rocky planet to the most compelling nearby candidate for alien life, and that shift alone is monumental. It forces us to look up and ask harder questions. Are we listening closely enough? What if someone out there is already watching us? If microbial life exists just next door, what else is waiting beyond the stars? Let us know your thoughts in the comments below. For most of human history, the idea of alien life was fiction. Now it's data, it's spectra, it's chemistry, and probability and deep space math. And it's personal, because if life has taken hold on a lonely tide-locked rock orbiting a violent red star, then life is everywhere. Proxima Centauri b isn't just another exoplanet anymore. It might be the first place we find to answer the oldest question we've ever asked. Are we alone? And the answer may just be four light years away. So stay tuned, because what we're seeing on Proxima b could be the start of something massive. Don't forget to like and subscribe, because we're not done watching the stars.